It is Saturday, August 13th. We have an emergency service call. It actually came in last night for their kitchen AC not working properly. And condenser is pretty dirty. So I bet you anything, it's gonna be high pressure code. So let's open this guy up. This is a Linux package unit. Um, all the stages are calling. It's running right now. Let's go to main menu. Is it data, history, alarms, yesterday, strike three on compressor one, high pressure, yeah. So it's high pressure codes. So it's running right now, but it's probably shutting off on high pressure as the day goes on. Um, see all this stuff. Whenever you wash these condensers, you wanna wash this stuff away so it doesn't get sucked back up. But, oh yeah, that guy's plugged inside, so. We're not even gonna play games with this. We're just gonna shut it off. I'll go get my hoses and we're gonna go to town cleaning this guy. Don't try to use the little coil cleaning doors. Those are silly. Just take the panels off. It makes your life so much easier and you can properly clean this guy. It is only 9.22 a.m. and it's already 102 degrees on top of this unit. It's always warmer on the roof, but and it's supposed to get a lot hotter today. So let's get this guy cleaned up. Um, and get out of here before I melt. This restaurant is notorious for having horrible water pressure. I mean, I get it, it's better than nothing, but I mean, it's ridiculously bad. Now, it's gotten a little bit better for us because the kitchen AC is the one that gets the dirtiest all the time, and the kitchen AC now is a micro channel coil, so it is a little bit easier to clean. All the old ones are still tube and fin condensers, but those ones don't get as dirty. But we're gonna start by simply, uh, if I can do this with one hand, yeah. We're gonna pre-rinse the coil and wet it. And then once we get it wet and get the bulk of the big stuff off, I'll get some coil cleaner on there. Now this is micro channel, so you gotta use special coil cleaner that's safe for the aluminum micro channel coil. All right, this is completely micro channel safe condenser coil cleaner. This is the yellow venom pack by Refrigeration Technologies. Used with their coil gun, their coil gun is special, even though it looks similar to the other ones, the ratios at which it mixes the cleaner is tailored for this. Notice that right here it says nine gallons, okay? If you mix it correctly and use it correctly, you can get nine gallons of coil cleaner out of this compared to buying the gallon jugs. Um, so anyways, uh, got it in here, we're gonna get it applied. Now this is safe for the aluminum. Just let it sit five to 10 minutes, then rinse it off. That's, that's how I roll, sometimes you gotta do another rinse uh, micro channel you got to be careful because if you use like the blue cleaners and stuff it can etch the coil damage it and cause refrigerant leaks so you want to be very careful about that all right i did a pre-soak of the outside of the condenser with the cleaner then we're going to pre-soak the inside you want to use the low concentration on these guys because this soap really gets stuck in these micro channel coils so you want to be cautious about that but we're just pre-soaking everything We'll let it sit, then we'll give it a good rinse. So the water pressure is very annoying, all right? I'm rinsing right now, and this is just gonna take a while. I'm just slowly rinsing right here, and we're gonna have to do both sides, just a little bit at a time. These micro channels, they get dirty inside. They're a little bit easier to clean than the tube and fin because they're not coils stacked on top of coils, but just gotta carefully rinse it, nice and slow. And again, remember, clean means clean, not half-ass clean, like clean. Now normally, uh, if I prepared for this, I would have brought my pressure washer because that would have made quick work of this, but I didn't really think that far ahead because I didn't really know what I was getting into. I kind of had an idea, but I didn't really want to get too crazy involved here. So we're gonna do our best, um, but again, cleaning it. But then we're gonna go from the other side too. You know, we're gonna do all sides. Now the front of this condenser, I can guarantee you, is not the problem. The problem is the backside because it's hard to clean so it never gets cleaned properly. So that one's gonna take some time. I'm not perfect and I screw up all the time, but something that I realize I need to do better at is protecting myself. So, now granted this cleaner isn't the worst cleaner. This is just the yellow Venom Pack, but still, I need to do a better job. now. I always wear glasses. You see, I'm wearing my sunglasses, right? And these actually are approved safety glasses. So I'm always wearing those, but I need to do a better job, you know, wearing gloves, protecting my hands, because these cleaners, you know, especially the blue one, it can be pretty nasty. So need to do a better job. I just went and put some gloves on. 
and uh, we're gonna continue on with this guy. Um, I got it all rinsed out as best as possible. I've been here a couple hours now, uh, at least an hour and a half probably. Okay, so it's not a race and it takes time with these micro channels to get all the soap out. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna take my blower and we're gonna blow the water out. Couple things that that does. Um, obviously, turning the system on with all that water in there, it's gonna take a while for that water to exit the coil and or evaporate. Um, in certain situations, in really, really hot climates, I've actually seen with all that water in there, it trip high head pressure. I know it doesn't make sense, but I've seen it, okay, many times. So the other thing though too is I'm gonna probe up on this guy and make sure the system's operational. If that coil's saturated with water, it's gonna take forever for the coil to dry out. So I'm speeding up the process. Um, and it is warming up a little bit. It's about 104, 105 now. So I'm just gonna go to town and blow everything out now. This also goes to show you that it's really hard to get these micro channels completely clean because I'm still getting soap. And I, I rinse this thing for an hour and a half back and forth and I'm still getting soap out of it. So it takes a while. That's another thing that can happen is if you turn it on full of water and it still has soap in it, it'll literally make a bubble party and start blowing bubbles all at the top of the unit and then it starts getting in the motors and everything. So that worries me also. All right, we are probed up. I went to go hook up my tablet and it's broken. What the heck, man? It's like the, the screen like broke or something. I don't know. I gotta take the cover off and see what's going on. I might've just overheated, but we're all probed up. I'm hooked up on my phone right here. Okay, let me turn off the flash because there's no need for that. First stage, looking really good. Don't see any major problems there. Let's scroll over. Outdoor air temps about 101 degrees. It's, good. it's interesting to know that, now this is surface temperature because it's up on top of the unit, but this is what I'm feeling is 111 there and then it's radiating off this ground, which is extremely hot because it absorbs it and then just radiates and kills me. So I'd be curious to see what this is measuring too. But anyways, all right, let's go back to this. So um, we're looking good there. First stage, don't see any problems. Uh, we're looking good there. We got a 15 degree temp split. We're calling for an 18 degree, so that's not too bad. Um, it's a little on the low side, but I'm also not getting the greatest airflow readings. Because if you look right here, well, what did I do? What is this guy saying? Continue. Come on, buddy. Gauges. Let's go. 73.52. Yeah, it's kind of, this one's reading. 75 57 so it's close all right let's get to our next stages for some reason this guy's struggling so let's go to circuit two it's not looking bad pressures are where i'd expect them to be sub coin super eats where i'd expect it to be not too bad let's go to circuit three Good gosh, man. This thing is struggling today. I don't know why. I think I'm, my, my fingers are moving around. There you go. Let's go to circuit three. There you go. About the same. Subcoin and superheat, you know. Not seeing anything too crazy. Approach temperature, I don't like why it's zero, but. Yeah. What's the calculated target is 162 right now we're at 147 um, and again I think it's more or less with my air probe placement this thing is rocking its butt off so I'm gonna go ahead and take the probes off and then the last thing we're gonna do now if you come down here saying 110 because it's just radiating off that tie that asphalt I got new boots but I'm feeling it so um, so I'm gonna take all the probes off and then we're gonna amp out all the condenser fan motors because it was off on high pressure right so even though we know it was a dirty condenser, we still got to test the condenser fan motors too. The outdoor fans are allowed to run 2.4 amps. So 1.73, kind of tricky to get on here. See if I can do this. I'll have to put the phone down. 1.6, so that's good. And then let's go to the other two. 1.6. 
and then the last one should be right here 1.6 so all the condenser fan motors are fine don't see any issues there at this point we're gonna wrap it up tell them to keep an eye on it um, I did notice while I was up here that there are other units that one right there and that one right there have high pressure codes but everything's running um, like they were in the history so I'm gonna talk to them about uh, coming back and following up on those units but they're working and they've got good TDs right now I'm not gonna waste any more time on a Saturday so I'm gonna get out of here and get on to the next thing so this video was actually filmed in August of 22. It's just been sitting in my hard drive of wonders with, you know, just footage. So what happens on these things is when I go through a summer, I'll have back to back to back to back coil cleanings. And I don't necessarily want to release those videos back to back to back. You know, I kind of try to mix it up as much as possible. And so this one just got forgotten about on my hard drive. And I figured why not as we're coming into the spring, it's currently uh, March 16th. So here in Southern California, it's starting to get about 70 to 75 degree days in my area, um, you know, and so it's starting to warm up and we're going to start getting into spring coil cleanings again. And then before you know it, we'll be back into August when this video was filmed of 22 and, uh, you know, it'll be 115 degrees, 110 degrees on the roof again. So coil cleaning is so important when we're going through this stuff, right? You got to make sure, and I can't stress enough, clean means clean, Okay. You don't do surface level cleaning. You do proper cleaning through and through, right? You make sure that the coils are clean. Now this is a micro channel condenser, so it's a lot easier for the most part to clean than a tube and fin condenser because tube and fin condensers tend to be a lot thicker, usually about two inches thick, and it's densely packed um, aluminum fins with copper lines running through it, and it's hard to get all the dirt out of those things, right? So a lot of times on tube and fin condensers, we will have to use the blue foaming cleaner. But the problem with the blue foaming cleaner, it, Refrigeration Technologies makes it too, they have their blue venom packs, is that it etches the coil. So when I say etches the coil, you ever notice on the blue foaming cleaners, they call them brighteners, okay? You ever notice that, you know, after you get done cleaning a coil, it'll be all shiny and bright. Okay, it's shiny and bright because it ate the top layer of the metal off. Like that's, that's really what's happening. So you can only do so many cleanings and you have to make sure that you're very careful about the concentration levels. When you're using the yellow venom pack, the one that's in here, it's not going to etch the coil. It's just a proprietary mix of soap and water and it does a really good job. So it's also important to say that, you know, you don't need the coil to be shiny as long as it's clean. Okay. Um, now there's time and a place for using other cleaners on micro channel. If the customer doesn't do normal routine maintenance, if they have a very greasy environment, you know, then sometimes you have to use a little bit stronger cleaners on the micro channel. And that can be problematic because it eats away the coil even more. And see the thing about micro channel versus tube and fin is that tube and fin has a copper line inside of it okay so if you eat away the aluminum fins there's still going to be a copper line right the refrigerant is in the copper line on a micro channel condenser the refrigerant is in the aluminum line and so when you spray the coil cleaner that etches the aluminum then you have more of a potential of a refrigerant leak because of the coil cleaner okay you got to be so careful so that's why manufacturers say you know to use uh, micro channel specific cleaners. Even some manufacturers just say use water, but that's not practical in some environments, especially with customers that don't do routine maintenance. Now, you guys can use whatever cleaners you want to use. I prefer to use the refrigeration technologies cleaners. Uh, John Pastorello is the inventor, super awesome dude, really humble guy, very nice. Um, and he's got a team of people behind him uh, that are you know, taking the company to new levels. And I just genuinely like the products that they make and I use them. But again, you know, you guys make your own decisions. Just make sure that if you guys are using cleaners, you're using the appropriate cleaners and that way they're not going to damage the coils because there's nothing worse than you as a service technician going out to do a routine job and clean a condenser coil. And then your company has to buy a condenser coil because you use the wrong cleaner. Same thing goes for ice machines too. There's ice machine specific cleaners for specific brands. You have to make sure that you're using the right kind of cleaners. And so as a technician, we need to do better. As a business, as an as a industry, we need to do better. And we need to understand what we're doing and not just apply a one-stop solution to everything. Do not trust the supply house to tell you what is best for your business. 
trust your own judgment, okay? Because supply houses have an agenda. They wanna sell what they make the most money from, right? So I'm here telling you that I like using refrigeration technologies cleaners, but I'm not saying that's the only cleaner out there. That's just what I choose to use from doing my own research, okay? Be very cautious about listening to supply houses when they tell you what alternative refrigerant to use, what coil cleaner to use, what contactors to use. Because one of the things about supply houses, and I go to supply houses every day, but I choose supply houses based on the products that they have. So I don't go to one single supply house every time. I go to a supply house to get, you know, refrigeration technologies cleaners. I go to a different supply house to get the contactors that I like, the motors that I like, and, you know, so on. So be very cautious about blindly trusting what supply houses tell you or even some random guy on the internet like me. Do your own research, okay? Trust in the fact that you have the ability to research and find out what the true things are going to, you know, what the right things are. So just make sure you guys are doing your due diligence, okay? Now, when it comes to, you know, a simple coil cleaning, it was a dirty condenser. It had high pressure codes. I could have cleaned it and just walked away. But what if there was a refrigeration problem too, right? Big picture diagnoses, right? That's my mantra, my motto that I use all the time. Take a step back and look at the big picture. Remember, I'm going to go off on a tangent right now, but oftentimes we can go down a rabbit hole and get tunnel vision and just start hyper-focusing on a problem um, that may not be the problem that we need to hyper-focus on, right? So sometimes you really got to take a step back and think about it. If you're struggling, I mean, for the most part, right? If you are struggling on a service call and you just cannot figure it out, majority of the time, at least in my case, if you take a step back, take a minute, take a break, think about it, you're going to realize that the problem is right in front of your face, okay? Um, it's, it's so simple to get that tunnel vision. As we're coming into the spring, the fall, things are going to start picking up on the West Coast for the hotter climates, the drier climates, even the wetter climates back east, right? Because you're going to have humidity issues. You're going to start, well, I mean, you, you, you have humidity issues all through the winter, but it's not really hot outside, right? So as the temperatures start rising, we're going to start getting busy. The demand is going to grow and it's really easy to make mistakes. And I make them every day. I don't want people to think that I'm some, you know, amazing super tech because I am not, I am a normal service technician, um, that, you know, still makes mistakes every day, right? But I'm trying my best to reduce those mistakes. And I try to share those mistakes with you all. So that way, maybe, maybe you don't have to make the same mistakes that I've made throughout my career. Okay. So I went through the system, I gauged up on it, I didn't see anything crazy going on. I was able to, you know, get the customer back up and running and all was well. Okay. I really appreciate you all making it to the end of the video. Thank you so very much. If you guys like this video, do me a favor, share it with your friends, share it with anybody that you know that would enjoy it, that it would help them help me to get this channel growing. I don't ask that a lot of people, but please share this content, help me to grow it. I'd really very much appreciate that. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, okay? You can also find me on all other social media platforms, all the major ones uh, under HVACR videos. I'm on all of them, okay? Uh, if you have any interest in supporting the channel, the easiest way to support this channel is literally just watch the videos from beginning to end. That really is the easiest way. A Couple other ways you can do so too. You can uh, support the channel via PayPal, Patreon, or YouTube channel memberships, which are all different ways to make monthly commitments to the channel, uh, financial commitments, right? You can choose to donate $5 a month or whatever it may be. Um, there's links in the show notes of this video for that. You can also support the channel by going to my website, hvacrvideos.com. We have merchandise available. We got shirts, beanies, sweatshirts, hats, all that good stuff, stickers. It's just another great way to support the channel. Uh, the hats, you know, I put a lot of thought and effort into the hats, so check them out. Um, I think they're a great value for everybody. Uh, also, last but not least, if you want to purchase any tools, I definitely suggest that you check out a company called truetechtools.com. Now, truetechtools.com, I have been purchasing tools from them for a very long time. I actually set up an affiliate program with them, so I have an offer code, big picture, one word, okay? At checkout, if you put in big picture, one word, there's a spot for it. Uh, you can get an 8% discount on majority of the items on their website. There's a few things it doesn't apply to, but majority of the items, you'll get an 8% discount. And when you do that, I get a small commission. So it's another great way to help support the channel. Okay. Again, truetechtools.com. So 
Thank you so very much. I really, really appreciate you all. And uh, we will catch you on the next one.